Hey, Math 3-2. <clears throat> Today we're going to look at uh, polynomial functions of degree 3. So last day we did degrees 0, 1, and 2. Now let's look at degree 3 polynomial functions. So we call these a cubic function. So a cubic function is a polynomial function of degree 3. The graphs of two cubic functions are given, p at x and q at x. All right, let's just have a quick look at those. While we're looking at these, let's read what it says below. The graphs, these two graphs have similar end behaviors, right? They both end behaviors in quadrants one and three, right? So similar end behaviors. But in between, the graphs have very different characteristics. The graph of P at X has two turning points. We call point A uh, maximum turning point. We call this a relative max though, all right? So that's called a relative max relative max and at point B we would call this a relative min note that points A and B do not consist of the absolute maximum absolute minimum values right A looks like it's a maximum in this area but we know the graph goes forever up so it's not the absolute maximum it's just a relative max and over here's at point B is a relative minimum because this graph goes down forever so it's not the absolute minimum if you look over at the graph of Q at X it doesn't have any turning points but the curve at C changes so we call this point C a point of inflection all right so graphs can change direction either by having maxes or mins, relative max or mins, or they can have a point of inflection as the graph of Q at X has. All right. Let's look at part two on the next page. <clears throat> Consider the following cubic functions, written in expanded form and in fully factored form. So we can write a cubic function in either form. Graph each function on a calculator using the window given and sketch all three graphs on our grid all right so step one let's type these in our graphing calculator I've done this already so you might want to take a moment to type these in so f at x was x cubed minus 3x squared plus x plus 5 g at x was x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4 and h at x was x cubed minus 3x squared minus x plus 3 once you have all those in make sure we go to our window setting it asks us to have a window setting uh, for x, minimum value of negative 2, maximum value of 4, scale of 1. For y, minimum value of negative 5, maximum value of 7, and a scale of 1. Now if we hit graph, there is f at x. Here is g at x. And this is the graph of h at x, finally. All right. So it would like us to graph this into our notes. So I'd like you to do that and then have a look and see what it looks like in my notes. So here we have what it should look like. F at X I did in blue, it's got a Y intercept of five. We can see across the Y axis at five. G at X has a Y intercept of four and only one X intercept at two, as well as negative one. And then H at X, uh, has a y intercept of 3 and x intercepts at negative 1, positive 1, and positive 3. So, part B state at least three, five, five characteristics that the three graphs have in common. So, some things they have in common, well, they all have got the same end behavior. All right, they all have their tails in quadrants 1 and 3. Um, these graphs all go forever right and left, so they've got the same domain, which for this question is going to be x is any real number. These graphs all have the same range, because all these graphs go for, uh, forever up and down, so y is any real number. Um, all these graphs have the same shape. How do we say that? Well, we could say they've got two turning points. 
they happen to be different but they all have two turning points all right they all have the same x-intercept at least one x-intercept so they all have an x-intercept of negative one and they all have exactly one y-intercept the y-intercepts different for all of them but they all have one y-intercept so describe two different characteristics well like we said uh, they have a different number of x-intercepts right, they all have one x-intercept at negative one but that's it for f at x g at x has one more and h at x has two more and they also have a different valued y-intercept And they all only have one y-intercept, but the values are all different for that one. D part one, how can the number of x-intercepts be determined from the fully factored form of the function? Well, let's go back up and look. F at x has one linear factor and one uh, quadratic factor that we can't go any further, and it's only got one x-intercept at negative one. And that's what this would be if it was a zero at negative one. G at x has two linear factors and it's got two x-intercepts at negative one and positive two negative one and positive two and h at x if i find the zeros it'd be at negative one positive one and positive three and sure enough it's got x-intercepts at negative one positive one and positive three so how does the fully factored form help us in determining the number of x-intercepts Oh, we could say something like this. The number of x-intercepts is equal to the number of distinct linear factors. Linear factors. of the factored form of the factored form of the polynomial how can the value of the x-intercepts be determined from the fully factored form of the function well these values are really just the zeros of the linear factors Part three. In each case, sketch the graph on the grid using the graphing calculator window given, and complete the work below the grid. So f of x equals x cubed. If you go to your graphing calculator and graph it, you would see a graph that looks something like this. The domain x is any real number goes forever right and forever left goes forever up and down so the range is any real number number of x-intercepts only cross the x-axis once there's one x-intercept number of y-intercepts only cross the y-intercept once there's also only one y-intercept number of turning points there are no turning points but there is one point of inflection and the left tail looks like it's going down while the right tail is going up all right so those might be hard to write left tail is down right tail is up okay you've got eight more graphs um, I'll do this next one negative x cubed would look something like this all right again the domain x is any real number goes forever right and left range any real number goes for uh, y goes forever up and down there's one x-intercept again at the origin there's one y-intercept again at the origin there's no turning point because it's got a point of inflection 
And now the left tail goes up while the right tail goes down with a negative cubic function. So I want you guys to graph the next seven and complete all of these. Then you come back and see what we should have. All right. All right, so if I look at f at x equals 2x cubed minus 15x squared plus 33x minus 20, there's the graph we should have in the viewing window. This graph goes forever left and right, so x any real number, forever up and down, so range any real number. There are three x-intercepts. All right, three x-intercepts. Uh, the y-intercept is at negative 20, the constant term, so it's going to be way down here. There are two turning points. There's turning point one, turning point two, and we can see the left tail goes down, the right tail goes up. Great. f at x equals negative 4x cubed plus 16x squared minus 16x. Again, it goes forever right and forever left. x any real number, range forever up and down, y is any real number. There are two x-intercepts, one here and one right there. This actually should be at the origin. The y-intercept is zero, crosses the y-axis at the origin. There are two turning points. Here's turning point one, and the other one's right at the x-intercept. And this graph has a left tail going up and a right tail going down. You look at the next one, f at x is negative 4x cubed plus 16x squared minus 16x, and now we've got a minus 6 where we didn't have in the previous one. So it's the exact same shape graph, x any real number, y is any real number. There's still only one x-intercept. It now occurs at a negative value. There's only one y-intercept. It now occurs at negative 6 instead of 0. So this graph's been moved 6 units down. There's still two turning points. There's one of them, and here's the other one. And the left tail is still going up while the right tail is still going down. Now if I change that constant term to positive 2, everything else is the same from the last graph. Well, domain still any real number, range still any real number. Now there are three x-intercepts. One, two, three x-intercepts. There's still only one y-intercept, and that y-intercept now occurs at positive two. There are two turning points, just like every part of this, this graph has been the same. There have been two turning points. There they are. And the left tail still goes up, while the right tail still goes down. All right? The last three f at x is 2x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 7. Again, domain's any real number, range's any real number. There's one x-intercept. The y-intercept occurs at positive 7. There are no turning points. There's a point of inflection, but no turning points. The left tail goes down while the right tail goes up. For the next graph, there's what it looks like. x any real number, y's any real number. There are two x-intercepts. This should be right on the x-axis, and there is the second one. The y-intercept is positive 14, so up there, positive 14. Two turning points, one right on the x-axis, the other one right here. Left tail is still going up, right tail is going down. All right. And the last one. Domain still any real number, range still any real number. There are now three x-intercepts. All right. Uh, the y-intercept is at negative 5, so it should be about there. There are two turning points. There is a relative max, and here's a relative min. And the left tail is going down while the right tail is going up. Okay, so after doing all of those, we should be able to complete some general characteristics about cubic functions on page 344. All right, so use the results from the investigation to answer the following regarding the characteristics of polynomial functions of degree 3. A, every polynomial function of degree 3 has the following characteristics in common. The domain, x is any real number. The range, y is any real number. And the number of y-intercepts, always 1. The graph of polynomial function of degree 3 has either two turning points or no turning points. In this case, there's going to be a point of inflection then. Inflection. All right. And it has either one or two or three x-intercepts. Never zero. 
the end behavior of a graph of a polynomial function of degree 3 is determined by the leading coefficient of the function. So complete the following, inserting the word up or down in each blank space. If the leading coefficient is positive, then the right tail of the graph will go up and the left tail of the graph will go down. If the leading coefficient is negative, then the right tail of the graph goes down and the left tail goes up. Part three, uh, part two, consider the behavior of the graph from left to right. Complete the following. The graph starts in quadrant three and ends in quadrant one. If the leading coefficient is positive, and the graph starts in quadrant two and ends in quadrant four, the leading coefficient is negative. Circle the correct alternative. The end behavior of a cubic function is similar to the end behavior of a, you know, a constant function. Doesn't make sense. And a quadratic function is either always up or always down, so it must be a linear function. All right, so it matches a linear function. Okay, let's go to the next page and do example one. In the last question, part three, students were asked to graph this function using the graphing window. Negative eight, eight, and two y is negative 20, 20, and five. Kevin entered one of the digits incorrectly into his calculator, and the graph was displayed as follows. How can he tell that the graph displayed in his calculator does not show all the main characteristics of the original function? Well, we know the end behavior that the left tail should be down since the leading coefficient is positive, right? So right now the the um, end behavior of the left tail doesn't look like it's going down, but it's supposed to go down. So the left tail should go down. As the leading coefficient is positive. The leading coefficient is positive. Also, um, every graph should have either zero or two turning points. This has one turning point, so there should be a second turning point. So a second turning point is missing. So we're missing the second turning point. Write a graphing calculator window that will allow all the main characteristics of this function to be seen and sketch the graph on the grid. So you play around for a little bit, see what you come up with, and then I'll write one down that will definitely work. Yours may be a little different, and that's fine. But I know this one's going to work. If you increase your x negatives to about negative 15, and your y's don't have to go quite as, or sorry, maximum doesn't have to go quite as high, quite as far right. You can do a scale of 1 or 5 or 10, whatever you want. Your y's, you need to go quite a bit further down and quite a bit further up, so maybe we'll go negative 300 to 400 by a scale of 100. If you do that, then you're going to get a picture that looks more something like this. All right. Now this looks like it just touches it, but it actually goes down and back up as we can see in this graph. Okay. Note, the class example above shows that the window chosen is crucial, crucial when graphing a polynomial function on a calculator. Knowing the characteristics of the graph is helpful in ensuring that a suitable window is used. All right, so if we use the wrong window, this function looks like a parabola, and we know it's not a parabola. We know it should be a cubic function that has two turning points. So summary of the main characteristics of the polynomial function. And they're all listed there. A great chart to have, all right, whether it's degree 0, 1, 2, or 3. And it tells you all the key things we need to know about these polynomial functions, all right? So you guys have your assignment. You can start working on that.